Final Hour Overdrive continues. Brought to you by FanDuel. Bringing you everything from the opening line of the final score. Brian Azio, Doug, Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles, McLennan. Got another Al's brother clue coming up. Where is Al's brother with those leaf tickets? Some people think they figured it out. Maybe they have. Maybe they haven't. I don't know. You got to wait until Friday to call in. I thought I figured it out yesterday. You have it figured out? I don't know. Someone said Davisville Station at one point, which I thought was so random for yeah. the first spot that Al's brother would be. Yet that's or there's probably some something thinking you know. that it was a hockey rink. Yes, based on the clue yesterday, it could be one of the great rinks in the city. I don't know. I don't know, man. I thought I, I figured it out, but then there was an argument, and I don't – So maybe we're wrong on that. I guess we'll find out what the clue is today. Al's brother's clue coming up at some point this hour. you got to hear it to find out exactly where he is with the tickets. And then we're giving those away on Friday. Darren Drager's coming in studio here in a moment. Bill Armstrong will join us. The hockey club. He's got to be GM. happy with it. But GM I wonder, of the hockey club. I wonder where where he's at as far as, okay, let's get over this. Like, let's have the nickname come out. Right? Like It's going to be Yeti. You like, think it, it, it is, right? That's it, what it sounds like. I Utah like Yeti. I thought, I thought Keller said that. Didn't he let the cat out of the he bag? Kind of leaked it or something. But then they, back, they walked it back. Okay. But well, I don't, but what the hell? Why wouldn't they just go with it? Like, it doesn't take long to get jerseys made and all that stuff. Like, just go with it. Let it rip. Jerseys look pretty sharp. Like, I thought it was a good, good look last, last night. night. You know, it was a pretty good pregame. They got a win. The crowd was into it. And they're 1-0 on in the season. So, good for them. And, yeah. you know, Chicago's chasing it already. Um, so, yeah, we'll get, catch up with Bill later in the hour. And our best bet's still to come. The Tigers won this afternoon. That is What crazy. a story, man. If I, th- I told you, and I was so confident. I said, other than L.A. San Diego, all of the other teams were going to go through. Well, and the Mets could win this afternoon. And the Padres could win tonight. And Kansas City could go up 2-1 on the Yankees. Dude, the Mets beating the Phillies is insane. They, insane. They, they, you talk about Mojo. We had Gibby on last yeah. week. He said it, man. There's something about this club. We just we feel like we've got it. We feel like we, we know what's coming, and we love where we're at. And that building was rocking last night, yeah, like was. New York crowds. And, like, what a scene if the Mets get through and the Yankees go out. Like, if you have – if the ALCS is Tigers-Royals, who on earth saw that coming Yeah, back in spring training? Like, that that would have been paying millions of dollars for a parlay. The Tigers I, and the Royals. Tigers, For the average Royals baseball fan, the they're probably Series. like, I don't want to watch that. I'd love to watch I, that. I, I would I, love to see it. Two small markets. I think it's a the, great, great scene. The Yankees will get through, don't you think? Uh, it's one one. It's one one. It's it, of course they could. It's one one. It's a big one tonight. And uh, wouldn't that yeah, be you good could if be... the Mets got through and the Yankees? Like that's New York. Yeah, you get a Subway Series again. Exactly. That would be great. But if like if the Dodgers go out and the Yankees go out in the divisional series, that's yeah. kind of crushing for marketing in terms of Otani and Judge. Yeah. But yeah, if you have Mets versus the Padres and the Kansas City Royals versus the Tigers. That will be. I kind of feel something like, we no one saw coming a few months ago. I kind of feel Nobody. like the Dodgers will get their act together, though. They, apparently, they're they're going with a bullpen game tonight. They don't even have a, like a registered starter. They're going with a bullpen Which is game tonight. Insane. Yes, but. like Otani's making seven hundred million. You can't pay for another guy to be a starter for you. Game four, the DS. Anyway, more on that later in the hour. There's Darren Dreger, a TSN hockey insider. What's going on? What a day here we got. What a day we got. What's going on? In case you're unaware, Joseph Wall's on the IR. (laughs) I told that you ruined my day. (laughs) The first guy I texted. I know. I just said, I was was like, difficult conditions, not many rounds of golf left. I'm like, maybe I could put together a round here. Started out with a nice birdie. Nice birdie on two. Look down at my phone. <laughs> Darren Dreger. I don't know. Something kind of fishy I'm sensing. I'm like, you've got to be joshing me, pal. You weren't. No. Hey, what, what are they going to do here with Joseph Wall? <laughs> yeah. So it's not related or so I'm told, but there was evidence last week of Wall got, looking he strained something in practice. But, you know, he stayed in the net. Continued to take shots, but you could see that he was wincing a little bit, right? Asked about it. No, there was nothing there. Um, Obviously played, you know, on the weekend and then continued to practice this week. So, you know, they pinpointed, and I think Berube touched on it. Something went afoul yesterday, lower body. It sounds like it's an insignificant muscle strain or lower back, but 
enough that for an IR, put them on IR. Yeah, and some of that's cap related, but you know, still you're missing three games. And Jace, you know, it's the timing of it. That's exactly what I was gonna say. Oh, if this happens ten games in, all right. I mean, players pull muscle. That yep, that happens. happens. You know, <laughs> on the eve of game one it's outrageous. of the NHL regular season. Played four season. periods in the preseason. But his no, last week scheduled preseason. start was yeah. game seven. Was game seven in Boston. Right. And the same thing it, happened. You know. And there are some who believe it literally is the same thing. It literally is, is a spasm or uh, something like that, but right? That, that comes back to then he created what's called the trust tree. Yeah. So I get that. He, he, if, he, if he comes and plays 55 games this year and everything's great, but he has this thing that that could flare up at any time. You know when it'll flare up game one of the playoffs? Like, that's where the trust, like, that's yeah. kind of the trust level we're talking about, where it's so difficult. When you have that happen in game seven, and then it happens the first game of the year, you're like, people Stole move on goalie, from man. it. What? Stole well, yeah. the goal. The only other. That's why you brought him in. That's yeah. right. You know. Get ready, man. So let me ask you guys this goalie, yeah. forward, defense. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I played all of them. Yeah, uh, so there's there's a theory out there. And, and look, Anthony Stoller has kind of alluded to it the other day in talking about Joe Wall and comparing him to Sergei Bobrovsky, not on the ice, but his approach off the ice, how hard he trains, how hard he works. You know, even on game days, you know, he's lifting weights and he's in the gym and doing all of that kind of stuff. And there's some out there who are starting to wonder whether he's got a change that up a little bit sure. and and because mentally does it get to a place where you're like well i gotta get stronger i i gotta get better whatever because i'm hurt all the time right. and is it possible to cross a line in training particularly in season for a goalie or any player there is but like bobrovsky i remember talking to some people out of florida when he first got there and he was always known. Even Chris Pronger played with him, I believe, in, in yeah. Philly and said, this guy is a hard-working goaltender. He goes, this guy works his ass off. But the, the narrative in talking to people in Florida is like, do you work smart? And you can work a ton and, and, hey, look at what I did, look at what I did, but maybe narrow that down into what is good for you. Yeah. That would be my message. Again, the Leafs have way smarter sports science people and all of that than we're, us sitting at the panel. But it's more about, you know, for him, even psychologically. Yeah. This is what I need to get. Like, I played That's with Mika Kippersoft. That's my concern, Kippers. man. Right. Mika Ki I played with Mika Kippersoft. You know, his off ice was a lot different than other people. But you know what? He played 70-plus games oh, yeah. seven years in a row. He knew exactly what he needed to play every night. Now, it might have been more stretching, a little bit, like... They adjusted as they went along. And, Jamie, if you can prove to somebody, this is what I need to get 70 games in, and you do it for two or three years, right. then they'll say, That's well, the go difference. nuts. They, go nuts. They yeah. don't ask Connor Hellebuck what he, like, no. he, he goes and he takes care of himself. I'm sure Wade Flaherty has a great relationship with him. So what do you need for this? You're playing yeah. Friday, Sunday this weekend. What do we need here? Like, that's the relationship between goaltender coach and the goalie and the coaching staff. Joseph Wall hasn't gotten into that groove yet. He, he got into a bit of a groove last year, headed into the playoffs and played well, games five and six. Game seven, tweak something because he got hurt, right? It wasn't he, did he get hurt at the, the end post, of game the post, six? That's, that's the belief. Right? But that's like the concern is that he's always worrying about another injury. And right. like, you know, sure, it's only a tweak, but he's worried that if I go post to post, I'm going to blow something out. That you're in big trouble if you're dealing with that, man. Like, if you're an athlete that's dealing with hurdles, like, I'm always worried I'm going to get hurt, that's a big hurdle to get over. Yeah. Like, a big hurdle to get over. About it. Probably the worst one in sports. Yes. You don't even know. Well, you're worried about playing, you're not always succeeding worried. at playing, just playing. Just playing. You talked about it in preseason. You can't bubble wrap, guys, no. although you want to in the preseason because of yeah. some of the injuries we saw. But now it's, it's for all the marbles type of thing. You get going, and he's not available. It sucks. And... Uh, how about the psyche of the team? O brought up, like, guys in the team are like, you know, we saw this. What's going on? Jamie, I'm so glad when I was a young guy that older guys were so miserable and so grizzled. Like, they would just go up to you and say, are you hurt or are you injured? Yeah, yeah there's a difference. Hurt means you can play. <laughs> injured means get lost and nobody wants to see you. And they were just so rude about it. And I know why now. It's just like we, 
Like, we're all in this. This is your livelihood. This is like, you gotta play. Everyone's dying to play. There's guys in the minors that are dying to play. And there's just, you get casual, the casualness of like, nah, I'm just, I, I, don't, I don't go tonight. It's, it, it Tough. really, like, there's not really 35 year old grizzled guys anymore. God, it would piss them off. Mm hmm. Yeah, especially after the Game 7 stuff. Like, it's well, literally it, the next time he's supposed to play. And then putting him on IR actually, I mean, it makes financial sense, but it also helps the process, I think, because now he's missing three games. We know that. Yeah, yep. shut down they, they for play, three games. They yeah. shut down for three games, so we don't have to – we're going to talk about it, but we're not fixated. Okay, well – is he going to bounce back well enough that he can play in New Jersey tomorrow night? That sort of thing. If three games turns to five, mm -hmm. well, then the then that's a different story. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, Darren Dreger in studio. So at least start tonight. Um, I saw you guys on Insider Trading last night. Pierre LeBron, you know, reporting that, mm -hmm. that Tavares, his camp, the Leafs camp, maybe they're going back and forth. There yeah. could be some mutual interest. But Puck will drop without an extension. He's got a year left. Same thing with Mitch Marner. Puck will yeah. drop tonight. No extension. Um, where do we stand on these two things? Hey, look, I mean, this is cliche to say ongoing discussions. That's pretty obvious. I mean, any player that's going into the final year of their contract, their agent is going to have conversations, you know, with the general manager of that club. The one thing I'm learning, which is interesting to me, of late anyway, is... The appetite among clubs with big players in play, Miko Rantanen, um, I mean, obviously Toronto with, with uh, Marner and, and uh, Tavares, even the Igor Shesterkin thing that mm -hmm. continues to drag out with the New York Rangers, that one I put as an outlier, it's different. Right. Uh, I mean, the importance of Igor Shesterkin to yeah. the New York Rangers is a big, big deal. But if you're Brad Treliving in the Toronto Maple Leafs, um, you're open to having a conversation with Marner and Tavares moving forward. You're not going to trade those guys in season. They're too important to the success of this team. But if you can't find a, a common place, middle ground, a place where it makes sense to commit long term to either guy, Tavares is different. It'll be shorter term than what Marner is looking for. Guys are starting to talk about the value of reinvesting those dollars. Right? And now here's something that makes sense to me. Can you define... Um I'm afraid of what you're going to say here. Reinvesting the dollars. Well, <laughs> you know that if you were going to trade Marner, you would have traded him this offseason. You would have traded him at or that around the ship draft. ship has sailed. Ship has and sailed. And it's not happening this year. No, it's not happening this year. Um, so, look, I mean, Mitch is entitled to command whatever he thinks he's worth on the open market. And if the Maple Leafs don't agree, all right, well, you've lost an unbelievable player. But teams are less and less worried about that now, unless they're generational talent. He's a real good player. Mm -hmm. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Absolutely. But now we just watched the Florida Panthers commit to Carter Verhage to the tune of, what was it? Eight by seven. Yeah. yeah. Seven million a year. Okay. They've got some other pieces there that teams want to get their hands on. Sam Bennett comes right. to mind, right? He's got a year left, I believe, right? He's going into the final year. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> I like that. Did you watch him play last night against the Boston? The Bruins were yeah. terrible in that game last night. But Sam Bennett he, was he a piece play. of work. Yeah. Well, the guy in Toronto will tackle everything and anybody in his path to get to Sam mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, and, yeah. and I say that, you know, can you imagine him being in a Tampa Bay uniform and playing the, the, the Florida Panthers? What about the tax-friendly states? Of course, Tampa being among them. Vegas is always in there. Nashville's now all of a sudden in there. Again, I, I guess what I'm saying is, again, it, back in the day, it used to be, well, we got to get these guys signed and locked down long term. Oh, so now, by reinvesting, you're like, it's like you're playing else. somewhere else and we're putting our money somewhere else. That's exactly yeah. right. That's what smart and, teams do. And those are good. There will be good players available. Well, Tampa there will just be did good that. Players they did available. Have a Tampa, goes, see you later. Gensel, you're getting his money. It's, it's a different world. But again, now you're also looking at it from a different light. And this is where I think Igor Shesterkin has the hammer on the New York. Everybody's talking about, well, you're not going to get the maximum. You think the eighth year from the New York Rangers matters to Igor Shesterkin? No. He's like, okay, hold on a minute. I play out this year. I'm going to get a seven-year maximum. Maybe there's a team that I think is better than the New York Rangers for me. Maybe there's a team that is more tax-friendly where I make up that money, and I'm going to bet on myself and my health and longevity, and I complete my seventh year 
I'll sign a one-year deal for $8 million, $9 million somewhere else. Like, players yeah. are starting to, to think a little bit differently when it comes. And we're talking about the top, the cream of the crop in these mm. big league deals. Sure. Right. Yeah, well, and the money's – someone's got to get money, it, like, right? Cap goes going, up every year. Cap's going up yeah. now. Like, it is going to be $100 million here very soon where you're going to look at percentage of the cap and that, but where you, it will relieve some of the situations where a guy's making eight – it's not as big a deal yeah. as it was three years ago, where now nowadays guys are going to hit double digits. I think Shesterkin is going to hold out for every penny he can get, and <laughs> rightfully so. so. But, sure. but yeah. you know, they don't they have them. They don't have anybody anybody else right now. Like right. Jonathan Quick is a good goaltender, but he's not Igor Shesterkin. No. Plus, he's thirty nine years old. Yeah. Exactly. You know, like they moved, they had Georgiev, right? And they moved yeah, off him. Georgie five. Exactly. Yeah, it was. Hey, we're we're in Colorado. we're in business with Shesterkin here. Yeah, and that's that's the way it's going to operate. Uh, Darren Dreger, TSN Hockey Insider in studio. Um, you know, it feels like the Leafs, even with the wall stuff, they'll they'll figure it out. They'll make the playoffs. The Oilers will likely do the same thing. Think Vancouver, although the Demko story is a little bit, you know, a little bit dicey. Yeah. But what about? And I'll throw Winnipeg in there. Have been a perennial playoff team. What about? Like Ottawa, where they're at, um, Montreal, Calgary. Like, where do you see these other Canadian teams that have been on the outside looking in, in terms of their approach to the season? Uh, like, I, I might be in the minority here. I, I feel like Calgary is going to be better than most people think. They're not going to be a playoff team, but I, I think that they're going to keep it interesting at least. And if they don't, then it's even more interesting because we're having conversations about Nazem Calgary, Coleman, some of the other pieces that could be in play there. Montreal, I mean, the loss of Patrick Lyon is just a hard kick to the shins because, as we know, with Montreal last year, they were a one-line team offensively, right? That can't be the case again this year. You know, Kirby Doc has to stay healthy. Um, you know, you've got Alex Newhook on that second line and Yoel Armia on the second line right side. Well, Not good. So... If, if, if Doc stays healthy, okay, he's going to make that line that much better. But I think I read somewhere collectively you had Gallagher, Josh Anderson, and Christian Dvorak last year combined for 30 goals. Yeah. And they're all making a lot of money, collectively making money. So yeah. they'll be competitive because they've got good competitive players. I happen to like Marty St. Louis, but I think Kent Hughes is going to have to put his hands on this roster again. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting. Like, you know, the start of the year, it's all about optimism and positivity. But – Someone's going to finish last. Someone's going to be in the bottom four or five. Gonna someone's going to be tanking. miserable in five days. Yeah, exactly. And that's coming. And, and it's not like your fan base is 10 to 15 yeah. days away from looking at mock drafts. Like who's coming yeah. in the draft next year? You know, to a man, though, everybody is like I'm talking about head coaches and, and managers talking about this Atlantic division and go on buckle up, boys. Yeah, it's it's going to be. And we saw again last night that Florida Boston game mm. like. If Big the, boy hockey. If man, the Toronto yeah. Maple Leafs get to a place, and really that's what they're trying to do, right? To play like the Florida Panthers, they'll have a real successful squad. But I, if I had watched that game last night that Florida played before we did Monday's show, the season preview, <laughs> I might have changed my Eastern Conference well, prediction. That's what yeah. he was talking well, that's, I, I might have. They should be getting more love. Like They a, should be. Again, they've been there two years in a row. To do it a third year is very difficult to do. <laughs> History alone would tell you that. But, like, Kachuk's still in his prime. Barkov's in his prime. Bennett's 28. Verhage and Reinhardt aren't slowing down. They're nah. in their late 20s. Yeah. Like, Forsling's a stud. He's in it. Like, what, why would it just stop in Florida? Yeah. Why would that happen? I yeah. mean, I, I don't they deserve that kind of love. I yeah, mean, they, they do. And I, I, I'm still I, – I went on record yesterday saying people are sleeping on Tampa. I think yeah, Tampa's I'm with you really there, too. Team. And I think the goalie is, like – He's been quiet the last couple of years. He had 30 wins last uh, year after being missing the first for two seasons. It, it, division is going to be wild. Season. It's going to be wild. I, think, I agree. I think the Atlantic is going to be crazy, which yeah. is good. Which, I mean, again, it, it's not. that's not what you want to hear, though, if you're Ottawa, Buffalo, Detroit, yeah. Montreal, because they, they're trying to get in. Yeah, yeah they're Ottawa's better, better, right? But, Ottawa's but, better with but, Allmark and yeah, Green, and they've added yeah. some veterans, and, yeah. you know, like Perron's a, a, a decent piece, I think. But Buffalo's 0-2 already. Mm. Like, they've come home and they're 0-2. Yeah. Like, what what is going to happen there the rest of the way that's all of a sudden going to make you feel better about them going in and Boston coming out or Toronto coming out? It's difficult to do, man. Yeah, that's going to be What hard. they're hoping for, I would think, is that five in the Atlantic, three in the Metro. Right. 
that's probably what they're that's that would be the realistic yeah somebody in the metro doesn't make it and you, you yeah know, those two bottom wild cards yeah. are atlantic teams right that's really that's the way i would think i, think I, I, I would I, think so too i watched greece in overdrive where didn't he say that pittsburgh was in Oh, yeah. I don't believe I've said that for years. I think years. it was something about Hazy Bees Five or something like He's that. Oh, I said that they had oh, the teams on the, that missed the playoffs last year that have the best chance of making it this oh, year. Okay, yeah, I did have Pittsburgh on yeah, that that's list. All right. I, I did have that. You, I did not say that it was a guarantee that they were going to well, get okay. in. No. Yeah, but yeah, again, that's a challenge. That's like you look at the teams on the outside. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to be attached to Pitt. <laughs> I'm not attached to I don't to want to be, be attached, attached to Pittsburgh. I'm not being attached to Pittsburgh. <laughs> well, okay. Like I was I listening this morning. One, one team between Pitt and Washington. Wash made the playoffs last year. Pitt I don't made. have any faith in Wash right now. No, me neither. Well, and Wash Logan is better Thompson's than they hurt. were last year. Yeah. I know, but what's going to happen in net? Like, I, I guess they're going to go with... Uh, Charlie Lindgren. Yeah, yeah. Lindgren was yeah. good last year down the stretch. Last. He By was the way, down the stretch. All three of you guys are part of the uh, top 50 projection. Mm-hmm. I get a bone to pick with you guys. Oh, yeah? I took a rocket of a text message. I won't say from who, but a higher-ranking individual with the Washington Capitals. Because Ovi wasn't in the top 50? Ovi wasn't that, in had, the top That's 50. him. That was all. I didn't have him in there last year. Yeah. He's not going to be in the top 50. I think the words embarrassing, yeah. disrespectful. Okay. <laughs> that Brian <laughs> these, these NHL, these pro <laughs> sports teams <laughs> complaining about umpires, comments, <laughs> newspaper articles. It's insane how much they complain. I'd have to check. I don't think I had Ovi in my top 50. It's why, why I don't do it. Yeah, I hear I you. Don't do it. I, I just I'm, don't do it. I'm grief. fine with I still get it because you guys do it. Yeah. I just I don't see how he's a top 50 player still. Like, I, I know his legacy and who he is. Maybe one of the yeah. ten greatest players of all time. I'm happy to say that. And in your defense, collectively, that's what I said. I yeah. said it's a projected best 50. Right. It's not a historical top 50. Right. It's what who's going to have the best 50 like, season yeah. this year. Evgeny Malkin's not on the list. And he's a top, in Pittsburgh he's a top 100 player of all time. Of course Gino he is. Malkin. He's maybe probably one of the 50 greatest was players he? ever. Oh, he no. wasn't. No, he was that's not. my point. He wasn't that's, on that He list. got jobbed out of that. In my opinion, he's a top 100. Yes. yes. He got jobbed. Yeah. He is one of the most underrated players of all time. Too. Evgeny Malkin. It's I, I another agree. reason I don't do them. Yes. Our trophy yeah. and Conn Smythe. Yes. He's won them both. His numbers are staggering. The guy's a winner. He does it all. And he, yeah. he never comes up. That's why your Pittsburgh Penguins might make the playoffs this year on the back of Maybe Gene. I am a Actually, you know guy. what? EK, if EK gets going. Eric Carlson. Well, there's another guy. Like Carlson wasn't in the top 50. You didn't have him in there? I no. don't think I did. I don't, and I don't think he finished in the top 50. Yeah. <laughs> but Eric Carlson. Just, we got just the whole coming this thing. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah. Take it Anyone easy. else? Who else has a problem with us? <laughs> Probably a lot of people. All right, Dregs. Okay, well, guys. we'll see what comes of it, man. Yeah, it'll be a good night. Yeah, it'll be a fun one tonight. There he is, Darren Dreger joining us. Um, all right, Bill Armstrong coming up of the Utah Hockey Club. Our best bet still to come as well. And Al's brother's clue on where he is with leave tickets somewhere in the city of Toronto. Overdrive continues, TSN 1050 and on TSN 2. All right, best bets brought to you by FanDuel still to come on the Leaf game tonight. Leafs halves tonight. The Leafs will be in Jersey tomorrow playing the Devils. And then they got Pittsburgh in town on Saturday for the home opener. Three games and four nights to kick off the season. You cannot ask for anything better than that. It will be electric at the Bell Center tonight. They're jacked in Montreal. I think most people expect it could be a tough year. Maybe not the playoffs, but you want to see growth. Lane Hudson's playing. He's making his debut tonight. People are obviously excited for that, as they should be. Yeah. And, uh, you know, here in Toronto, we've been talking a lot about the Joseph Wall news. He's on the IR. He's not playing. Tony Stolarts. Anthony Storlarts, yeah. here's your opportunity, man. You can make yourself a legend pretty quickly here. Easy, you yeah. stand on your head. He had a great preseason, and uh, we'll see what he's got starting tonight. And, again, that home opener is on Saturday night, and Al's brother has been sent somewhere in the city. Yep. Somewhere in the city with a pair of leave tickets for that game opening night. And you have to guess where he's hiding for your chance to win them. All right? You want to hear the third clue of the week? I want to hear it. Let's hear from Al's brother. All right, it's Wednesday, it's hump day, it's time for another clue to hopefully get you over the hump to find out where in the world is Al's brother, and here is your next clue. I am currently in a building located in the Upper Beaches area of Toronto. Okay, now I know where he is. I know. Where I figured it out now. Now I got it. I knew where he was yesterday. You had an idea where he was yesterday? I didn't I didn't pick up on it yesterday, but now I know where he is. Yeah. 
Okay. It's one of my favorite spots. A lot Is of it? fond memories in this place. Oh, there you it's go. It's a great building, and I'm glad that Al's brother started his voyage at this place. Yeah. It's got great history. Good, good clues. I've been there many times. Many times. All right, Al's brother, again, has been sent out. He's got the tickets, and you got to tune in tomorrow for the final clue. And then the first caller through on Friday with the correct location wins a pair of tickets to the lease home opener Saturday night. All right. Can't beat that. Full details at tsn1050.ca. How are we feeling about a win tonight for the Leafs? Like this Joseph Wall stuff, again, has just clouded everything in terms of like the anticipation of the game. Yet, All I know they're, is they're that playing and they're healthy tonight. Other than keep, Wall, it's like it's go time tonight. Keep in mind, like it doesn't matter with the standings. Montreal and Toronto always have good games. Like, you know, was it last year? Yeah. It was a crazy game, right? Six five and overtime. Great opener. Something like that. Richest history in the sport. Yeah. So I mean, I I think when you have I've said this before, when you have rivalry teams that play each other, the game is always good, regardless of where I think the teams will end up in the standings. That's right. So it should be a good game today. And last night, I guess the hockey club out in Utah, they yeah. put their stake in the ground. I've played games in that Delta Center for the Salt Lake City. Golden Eagles. I love it. In the early 90s. Well, I'm wondering great. if you saw the amount of beer sales when Oof. you played there in the early 90s compared to last night, because you were reading the stat, $120,000 in beer sales, more so than any other jazz game in the history of that or, building. Yeah, exactly. Or any other event, period. Well, since 1991. 91. Uh, it's impressive. I think what they're going to have tremendous success. It's a great city. So... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking right. forward to it. Now, Bill was working last night, so I don't think he contributed to well, he that. might have had a few after. Afterwards. Big win. Okay. Open night. Why not? Here's the GM of the Utah Hockey Club, Bill Armstrong. Bill, did you contribute to that tab, 120 grand in beer sales last night? I I, uh, I didn't, but but I but I watched them on screen throwing a few back, too, so <laughs> it, was, it was good. It, it added to the life of the party, but uh, uh, certainly was a special night, and... Uh, and I think the beer might have helped that, too. <laughs> well, sure. well, Bill, take us through the atmosphere there, the lead-up and how it's been so far. Uh, obviously, it was probably nice to get the, the first game out of the way, but how's it been and, and leading up to the game last night? How is everyone settling into Salt Lake City? Yeah, really well. It's, it's, a, it's a great town. Number one, it's a beautiful town, uh, and our players are super excited about being there. From the moment we got off the plane and there was like 3,000 kids in a hangar chanting for us, you know, it's, it's been a special, uh, it's been powerful moments for our group since we've got there. And last night was no different. I was about four blocks from the rink. It was about 5.30 and I pulled up to the light and you know, I had to wait for the light to go. And it was a wall of blue, blue. Everybody wearing blue, Utah blue, going to the game. And it, it just felt incredible to see that. And uh, um, they, they just absolutely crushed it with the merchandise and the beer sales and mm -hmm. the gates. It was People were so excited about seeing us play last night. It was one of the loudest buildings I've ever been in last night. It was just amazing. Yeah, it looked really, really cool watching that game. And, again, your team got off on the right foot. You get a win. And, you know, it's been well documented what was going on in Arizona. We've spoken about it on this show with you, Bill. Um, and, you know, you guys, you got a young team. You're, you're a growing team. But how much do you think the marketplace, the building, the fans, how big of a positive impact could that have on you guys in terms of, what your projection is and what your expectations could be having that level of support and playing, you know, back in a rink like you should be playing in. Yeah. I mean, listen, they get, they're going to give us a push, the fans, uh, the, the enthusiasm for sure. We're like, we, we, we have to put it in perspective. We're, we're in the fourth year of the rebuild. We're the third youngest team in the national hockey league. You know, we've got talented guys. We, we've still got a ways to go in our development and our growth. But we're getting there and, and playing in that environment with the level of enthusiasm from our fans. I mean, they inspire anybody to play harder. So that's going to happen. And, uh, and and I like where we are as a team. and I like where we are as an organization. And if we can just take a step from last year and, uh, you know, cut out that 14 game losing streak, we're going to be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I like yeah, it. that helps for sure. Uh, but you also, you know, Bill, you got a little aggressive. You made a big move on bringing in Sergachev, who's a, you know, yeah. a, a real stud uh, defenseman, a guy who plays in all situations. So, you know, is a move like that, you want to tell the team, young guys that are looking to get to the next level, that you're serious as a manager to help them and surround them with some guys who kind of been there, done that. Yeah, and and. Listen, he's, he's one of the guys. I and mean, obviously, he's a building block for, for this organization. You know, now you start throwing him on the ice with the Kellers and the, the Coolies and the Gunthers and the Dones. And, 
you know, your, your, your group grows a lot just by having him around. But we also added Ian Cole. You know, he's a two-time Stanley Cup winner, and Stenland has won it before, and Bertuzzo's won it before. So now we got a good mix of guys that are going to help us get out through those tough times with some leadership and over that hump and teach our young guys what it takes to win uh, and, and how disciplined and how dedicated you have to be to get into the playoffs. And that's a huge thing. And, um, you know, we talk about that all the time with our group is just pushing the group and winning the day. You know, we're going to be up and down here and there, but winning the day is a huge thing for this group. Um, and, you know, you, you got to love the enthusiasm from our younger guys too. It's, 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 you can feel it at the rink. You can feel it from our fans and you can, you can just feel it from our, from our players. They're really excited. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's a good, it's a good spot to be with an organization. How important was it to put the C on Clayton Keller's uh, jersey and name him the first captain in Utah history? Oh, it, was a huge, it was huge for the group. You know, I, you know, Kells is, is someone that I've known because my son was basically the same age um, as Kells growing up. And uh, Kells' team, when he was a kid, I don't think they lost the game for like two years. <laughs> they were so <laughs> good. And, and I can remember watching how good he was as, a, as, as you know, even when he went to get drafted, he was out of BU and that. He's just, he was just such an incredible player, but I never really knew the dedication that he had. And I took over as manager and he broke his leg and it was bad. Uh, it broke the femur and he had a rod put in. And I've, I've never seen anybody in my life work harder about getting back. He couldn't walk straight. He, he walked with a limp and he found a way to skate and he found a way to make it back for opening night. And he put up 86 points on the board. He earned my respect um, as a player when he went through that. And to see how much he cares and how 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 hard he competes, um, and I think all of our players respected him, and it was time for us to make a move. He was at that right age where he'd found great maturity, and and he wanted to take that next step as a leader on our team. And I, I think it gave it gave our whole organization a boost uh, when we named him captain. With Bill Armstrong, the GM of uh, Utah, and they they made their debut last night at home. They got a big win over Chicago, and. Keller's one of those guys that will be on the radar for the Americans, you know, as we get closer to the Four Nations Cup, the Olympic Games. Yeah. I'm curious your role in this, Bill, like as a GM, one of the 32 GMs in the league, uh, and you, you obviously know the executives who are running the American team, the Canadian team, Swedes, Finns, whatever it is. Like, how often yeah. would you expect to, to get calls on your players, and, and how do you go about answering them? You know, if, if someone calls you and goes, what's going on with Keller? Is he a is he a fit? Should he be a fit? Like, how do you how do you intend on on handling those type of conversations? Considering you're obviously biased, they're your guys. Yeah, but you know, you're yeah. Canadian. Like, if Doug Armstrong calls you and there's a Canadian on your team, like, <laughs> how, how do you go about that? <laughs> well, it, it, I'm interesting because I'm because I'm dual. Like, you know, I spent half my life in Canada, half half my life in the U.S., and I raised my son as a U.S. born player that you know ended up playing Division One at BU and uh, in, in, in Boston College. So. I kind of I kind of sit in the middle. I sit, sit okay. on the fence a little bit without. All but, right. Um, that those are easy because like whether it's Logan Cooley or it's you know it's it's Clayton Keller in the U.S. calls. You know those those guys are warriors for us, for us. So we don't have any you know problem putting our you know two cents in and and pushing for our guys to play. We we want our guys to play at the highest level. They'll learn something from that. We've always encouraged our guys to go to Team Canada at the end of the year or, or Team USA and get into some pressure situations and some playoff situations and grow from it. So uh, I think it's a win-win. Um, I think the only scary thing is the GM is you're sending your best player and uh, somebody's going to get hurt at that tournament. You just hope <laughs> it's not your guy. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. That's yeah. true. We, we talk about that all the time. But uh, I wanted to, to transition into your owner, Ryan Smith, and, and just uh, yeah. what he's brought to the table, his passion and – we were kind of joking, like he's a younger guy, got the hat on backwards, and just seems to be very <laughs> casual. So, you know, what's it what's it been like, uh, you know, working with him and how passionate he's been about the market? Well, he is passionate about the market. Him and his wife Ashley, they do a great job, and they they're all about the community. And uh, I think what they've done there is they have a level of respect where when you work with them, you you just kind of see how they operate. One of the first things I remember when I walked in the room is how transparent he was with me. Um, just about what he wanted to get accomplished. And, and uh, he's a dynamic speaker, number one. And just being around him, you get motivated. And what he's got accomplished so far is incredible. Um, and just for him to come on board, I think the big thing with him is he sat with our players the first thing and had a conversation with them. And then he took them golfing. 
And I think, you know, after they spent a whole day with him, they were just truly enthused and, and he had a big impact on our group right away about, hey, listen, this is what I want to get done in Utah. We're welcoming you into our family. And, uh, and this is what I think it could be at the end of the day. So he was truly somebody that, you know, he calmed the storm right away um, and, and got everybody going in the right direction when once we moved from, from Arizona to, uh, to Utah. All right, Bill, we'll let you go. Um, I know you're dual, like you said, but we get a lot of people in Richmond Hill, big fans of this show. They love having you on, man. So don't forget about them. Don't forget about I them. I love Richmond Hill. I grew up there. I'm born and bred in Richmond Hill. I'm a hill boy for sure. That's an awesome place. Absolutely. Congrats on last night and good luck the rest of the way. We'll do it again down the road. All right. Thanks for having me, guys. Take you got care. It. Bill Armstrong, GM of the Utah Hockey Club. Good Richmond Hill boy. Big guy, too. Monster, he's man. Like 6'5, 220. But, like, if you look at him, he's like, works out hard. Like, he's jacked. He's jacked. He's yeah. A huge guy. Big dude. But, you know what? They got, he, he admitted it. Listen, we're trying to take a next step. Year four of the rebuild, you know, trying to get to the next level. You know, bring in Sergachev, got a new new owner, lots of deep pockets. They're in a good situation. Move. This guy must be so ha- much oh, happier. Man. When you consider where he was, where they were, the ownership in flux constantly in Arizona. They're playing at a university. Yeah. Like it just, it was a, you couldn't ask for anything better than Ryan Smith showing up, getting the team, get to Salt Lake, infrastructure's there. Yeah, you're you know the people are showing up and you get off to a win like you just you couldn't write a better script than that last yeah. night. Happy for yeah, and that, that was a great great scene, great great scene. Um, yeah, Bill was on that Generals team, the eighty nine ninety team that won the Mem Cup, and Lindros was on that. I team. think I played against him. Like he's I, he's a year older than me. Yep, I'm Mike 100%. Craig was on that team. Mike Craig, the right handed shot. Mike Craig, he's Didn't a Mike Leaf. Mike Craig play for the Leaf. Yeah, yeah, he was a Leaf. He's yeah. he has some great stories that. Is he a beauty? He was a beauty. I, I don't. I don't know, Mike Craig. There was a famous story, and I don't. I don't even know if this is true, but I'll tell it because <laughs> it doesn't matter. That he famously was playing for the Leafs. Pat Burns was the coach. This would have been in. I think Burns would have been the coach. Ninety four, ninety five. Yeah, Burns was still there. And uh, <laughs> there were too many men on the ice. Yeah. And I think it was Mike Craig that skated by and yelled, Burns, we have too many men on the ice. Get somebody off. Yeah. And then kept skating. <laughs> <laughs> like, maybe get off Yeah, the you ice. might want to jump the boards. We got Could too be, many men on yeah. the ice. Get somebody off. He's, he wanted his Arm shift. Goes yeah, off. He wanted his shift. Too many men it. on the ice. Oh I've God. heard that through the grapevine. I don't, they, if that's I'm wrong on that, true. that's my bad. That my bad. could be true. It's a great story anyway. I want it to be true. Yeah. Um, all right. Leafs Habs tonight. And that's not the only game. Again, we got great games in the NHL tonight. And to say nothing of Major League Baseball and what's going on, the Tigers are up 2-1 yeah. in their series. They beat uh, the Guardians 3-0 earlier today, and the Phillies are, are up 1-0 on the Mets halfway through that game. They're middle of the fifth inning. Yankees, Kansas City tonight, and Dodgers looking to survive in the NLDS. So we got great baseball games tonight. We got great hockey games tonight. Tomorrow, Thursday nighter. Football. Seahawks, Niners, Battle of the NFC West. Hazenbro on that pick. It's a tough game. Niners laying three and a half on FanDuel last time I checked. Take the Niners, don't you? They're pissed. Feels like the Niners are the play. Hey, they're pissed after. Feels like it, but yeah. tough game. Short week on the road in the division. We just went through it with the Cowboys yeah. and the Giants a week and a half ago, and Al's brother and I got burned, so we'll have yeah. more on that tomorrow. But uh, we'll come back to you up the game one more time. Leafs Habs tonight. All right, today's best bets are powered by FanDuel. Make your picks and assemble a same-game parlay in seconds on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Leafs halves tonight. I'm going over the number six and a half. That's based on what's happened in the past, but I just feel like early in the season, you see sloppier games. You see more. That was like a 5-1 game with Boston last night. I ended up 6-4. 6-4, exactly. It is sloppy. Yeah, Yeah, I I, I could see a 5-3 game tonight or something like that. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to go over the number. Mitch Marner to record a point. Mitch Marner three plus shots. I'm I'm on Marner to get hot tonight. Yeah. Bell Center. That parlay paying plus two sixty four. Today's best bets powered by FanDuel. Live same game parlays are now available for every NHL game on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Please play responsibly. Nineteen plus. Physically located in Ontario. Um, Joseph Wall has been the story of the day. Like for there's, sure. There's no other way to get around it. I mean. Guy was expected to, to play. Yep. Yeah, everyone woke up this morning saying, Wall, let's see what he's got, man. Can he give you 50 starts this year? Can he be the man? Can he be the yep. guy? They're committed to him. 
never started the year as your starter, never started a game at the Bell Center, hurt. IR, out for the first well, three games. IR is Minimum. aggressive. That's the thing. Yes. Like tweak something, hey, might be available for Jersey or Pitt. No, IR, out for a week. You're out. And as Dreg said earlier, there's no guarantee he just comes back in a week. Yeah. Which like is- if, if it turns into a, eh, it's going to be another few days or we'll give you an update in a week, then you're like, what is going on here? Yeah. Which is. I don't want to throw that into the universe, but the fact of the matter is, it is a distinct possibility. And I've reached the point now where I can't use the term shocked with anything injury related to Joseph Wall. Right now, yeah, he's got to break that. Can't be shocked by yeah. anything. He's got to break that narrative because that that's what been one of his only downfalls as a young player. It's like, hey, this guy, you got to be available. And he hasn't been available so, at, at critical times. What do know? we expect out of Anthony Stolarts and Dennis Hill to be that tandem? You're okay. the least. You're Craig Berube. Let's say Tree Living comes to you and goes, you got Stolarts and Hill to be for the first two weeks. Yeah, I mean. Everything all good? Everything's fine. They're both. I think Hildeby will be an NHL goaltender. He's going to get an opportunity to do that. Stolarz is. This would be an interesting stat. I think they would be the tallest tandem potentially ever. Yeah, they're monsters. So Hildeby is 6'7". Six, seven. Six, seven. is 6'6". Six, six. Now, Ben Bishop, did he play with a tall goalie? Did he play with Mike Smith, maybe? Ben Bishop was 6'7". Mike Smith was 6'4". Maybe. I think so. I'm that's trying to even think smaller of the than these two, though. Well, that's what I mean. Like they could be the tallest tandem ever like, to play. Joseph Wall six three. Yeah, I know, but he looks like a shrimp compared to the other two. Yeah, because the other two are monsters. And that's kind of where the goaltending position is. Well, gone. unless you're Dustin Wolf in Calgary, he's like five ten, five eleven, but he's got to be perfect in his position. He's like UC Soros. Everyone else is six three, six four. You know, Stuart Skinner six four, two twenty five, like. You know, you look at these goalies. Markstrom six foot six. Vasilevsky's like six four, six yeah. three. Like, it is really reassuring when you just see a monster back there. Yeah, well, because by accident you get hit by the puck sometimes just with positioning. Mm. Just like um, too big, it just can stretch out. Yeah, I didn't know where it was going, but yeah. it hit me. But you have to be talented enough that guys can pick the corners in this league. So That's you got to right. make saves. So we'll, well see. That, this is the story, man. Now it's like Anthony Stolarz, as I said off off the top of the show. Like if I'm if I'm Craig Berube, if I'm Brad Tree Living, you're not panicking. You no, can't give off game. panic. The game they haven't even played a game yet. Yeah. But I think you get to Stolarz and you 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 say, hey, listen, you've been waiting for this opportunity your whole life. Yeah. Go play. You're, you're starting game one for the Leafs at the Bell Center. What an opportunity you have. Sure. Go out and seize it, man. Go yeah. out there and play great tonight. You're going to start the home opener with Sidney Crosby in town on Saturday night. Go seize that. Yeah. And put yourself in a position for when Wall returns, and he will, where it's like, Wall's got to pass you now. Thing it's is, your net, and Joseph Wall has to prove he is worthy of starts. Well, and it's still like the Hild- Hilda Beast is going to push. Like Maybe you, he you, pushes. That's my point is it's going to be a competition in net. You have to find – like, establish your game. That's all you need to do. What Worry a story about that one game. Be. Can you imagine Dennis Hildeby's their game one starter in the playoffs? Might like, be. is that what's your Jerry's on that? Well, it's higher than it was 12 hours, hours ago. ago. Yeah. Like, I would say 12%, but <laughs> yeah. it's not zero. It's not zero. I think it might be closer to 20%. Well, you could be one of four, right? Because Matt Murray would be there. Well, and Murray, once you bring him up, then you got to put him on waivers again, and he's banged up anyway right now, I think. Well, see, I mean, it's one of four, so it could be 25%. It might be 25%. I've got 12, though. I don't know. I feel like it's... I I don't want to get there. Again, I I, want to believe in Joseph Wall. I want to see him play. I want it to work out. Yeah, let's let Joseph Wall heal and... Recover, play, and put it behind you. Exactly. That is the most likely outcome, but it's difficult to see through that right now. Well, yeah, based on... Where we're at. Exactly. All right. Thanks to everyone behind the scenes for helping out. We appreciate it. Everyone for tuning in today. TV, radio, podcast, web, up on YouTube as well. You can find everything we do on YouTube on TSN's YouTube page. We're out of here. Enjoy your evenings. Enjoy the games tonight. We're back tomorrow at 4 p.m. We'll chat then.